In this video, I'll walk you through all the steps you need to go through to get an up and running SAP ABAP system where you can do ABAP development. First thing we need to do is create an account on call.sap.com. Call stands for Cloud Application Library. So if you don't have an account yet, click on log on and then click on register and create an account. I already have an account, so let's have a look at it. So on the Cloud Application Library, you can find all kinds of SAP products that you can install. There's trial licenses and there's development licenses. What we're looking for here is a development license. It's basically a free solution. You get a limited 90 day license, but you can extend it indefinitely uh, using a license from SAP that is free for developers. Later on in the video, I'll show you how you can create such a license. So a good system to start with is the one that was created for a course that SAP made, writing testable ABAP code. It's a pretty decent system you can do ABAP development on. Uh, it's not huge, so it won't cost you a lot of money to run it. Um, so you can select this one and then um, you get all the information about it. So you can then create an instance and this will generate a ABAP system, an SAP system on a cloud application provider. That could be Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud. So you'll have to create an account on either one of these services before you can use uh, the application. So in this example, I'll use Amazon Web Services. You can create an account on Amazon Web Services on aws.amazon.com. The creation of the account is free, but uh, you will have to uh, link your credit card because running the system will not be free. In order to create an instance, we first have to link our account that we created on Amazon Web Services. So go to accounts and click create account, then give it a name, select a cloud service provider and give it your access key and secret key. Those uh, you can find in your AWS account and that information will be necessary here to link your CAL account to your AWS account. So once you've done that, you can go uh, to the solutions and create an instance. Create an instance, you can also see what the price would be for this instance. So if it's running, it'll cost you 58 cents an hour. And if it's not running, it'll cost you $14 per month. So keep in mind that while you're using it, it's gonna cost you for every hour it's running half a dollar, a little bit more. But if you're not using it, there's also a price associated with it. You can, you can terminate the instance, but of course, if you don't terminate it, it'll keep uh, costing some money based mainly for the storage, because if, you, if your virtual machine is not running, you'll still be charged for the storage. This is also an estimate. Uh, if you have a free tier, then maybe some of this is not, uh, so this is gonna be a little bit lower, but keep in mind, there is a price even if you're not running it. So if you're done with it, terminate it so that uh, you're not uh, keep paying for it. So you give this a name. And in this case, for this instance, there's only one region available. So there's not a lot of choice. And the password here, uh, there's some pretty uh, strict rules here. Uh, it must be well between eight and nine characters long. So it's either eight or nine, I guess. So uh, try to come up with a password and keep in mind, this is the password for almost everything related to this instance. It will be the SAP user's account. It will be the operating system user account. Everything will be uh, this uh, password here. So we can give it a name. Uh, Let's call it uh, up up dev system, uh, a region. Then uh, we choose a password. Um, so password, and we click create. Now uh, it will start creating the instance on the AWS system, but you have to store the private key. That is necessary to access the application, for example, through SSH, if you want operating system access to um, to the system. Now, the password here uh, doesn't have to be the same one as you used for the uh, appliance, but you have to uh, use a password for this private key. So download it, save it. You don't necessarily need it, but if you want to have operating system access to the system, then you'll have to use uh, this application. So now uh, this system is being prepared on the AWS cloud. So let's have a look at that. 
when we're logged into our AWS account, we want to go to EC2, which is uh, the compute instances. So any instances that we're having are there. So here we see that there's two running instances and uh, these are the ones that we created. So these are the instances that we just started from the SAP Cloud Application Library. There is this SAP Frontend, which is just a Windows instance that uh, gives us access to, has an SAP GUI installed, has Eclipse installed, and we can use it to access the application. And then there's a Linux instance, which is the actual SAP. So back in our SAP Cloud Appliance Library, we can see here that uh, this is all the information about our instance. We see it's running. Now there's a getting started guide, which is very useful because it tells you all about what is in this instance and how to ac access it. So basically we created the instance and it's running on EC2 now and it does not get a fixed IP address. So you can assign a fixed IP address if you want, but you'll pay for a fixed IP address whenever it's not in use. So a fixed IP address is not that expensive on Amazon, but whenever you're not using it, you're paying for it. So you really don't want to do this if you want to keep this uh, the costs low. In the quick start guide that I talked about earlier, um, in section three, you'll find the link that explains how to request and install mini soft license keys. You can click that link and it will tell you how to get to a mini soft license. I'll walk you through it here. So first of all, you go to this uh, URL, scp.com slash mini sub and click on it. And then you have to identify the type of system that you want a license for. In this case, uh, so MPL is uh, what we can find here and then choose that system and fill in all of this information with your uh, with your uh, name and etc so i'll uh, fill this in now and you have to have your hardware key here because you'll get a license for that specific hardware now we were already logged into sap on client one in order to apply a license to a system you'll have to log in with a special user uh, on a special client. So let's close this one and connect. And now we're not going to connect to the default 001 client, but we're going to connect to the zero client. And we're going to use the user SAP star, which is a special SAP user that is used for some administ administrative tasks. The password is again, the same main password that you used when you set up this instance. So now you start the S license transaction by typing s license in this uh, command bar here at the top and the license uh, installation uh, will start so here you'll get your license your hardware key so you copy this key and then you paste it in here and then you click generate this will generate a text file which is your license text file here uh, so there's a bunch of information in there product number etc so this is your license and as you can see it's uh, valid for 90 days. So every 90 days you can generate a new license and assign it to the system. Um, so you'll never run out of licensing, but you have to renew it every 90 days. Keep in mind, this license is only for developers for trying out things, uh, not for production systems, which I think is obvious. Click on install here and select the file uh, that you downloaded and then your system will be licensed. So in this case, I already uh, completed that. So here it says this one is valid. So then you have a licensed system. Now, if you go back to the quick start guide here, it says after you uh, have applied the license, you have to create uh, call the transaction sex store and run a check for all entries. I have created the license in that same session where, where you have or installed the license. You have to go to this transaction, um, show that in detail. So sec store, and then just hit execute. It's gonna take a while to compile. When that's done, uh, your license is successfully applied and you have a licensed system. You can see if you have a licensed system by clicking system status, that gives you all kinds of information about the system, but it also tells you how long your license is valid and the fact that it's a demo system. So now we have our system up and running and we can use it. We now saw how you can log into the SAP system using SAP Logon. You can also log into an SAP system for development using Eclipse. Eclipse is already installed here, so we can simply start it. The connection 
to this system is already set up here but you will have to enter your password again so, um, so uh, from here you can start your own uh, SAP development so you could write a new uh, ABAP program directly from here uh, let's call it hello world And then we can do that. We can activate it. There we go. So uh, in about 10 minutes, we set up our own SAP ABAP development system and wrote a Hello World program. Thank you. Now keep in mind, these systems are now running. If you're done with them, you will probably want to stop them because they keep costing you money as long as they run. So you can just go into your Amazon console, select the systems and click stop. Don't click terminate because then they're permanently gone. You can click stop. You'll just be paying for the storage for when you're not using it. When you need them again, go here, click start. Every time you click start, they will get a different IP address. So the one you're worried about, uh, the one you have to log into RDP is always going to be this one here. So every time you restart this SAP front end, you're going to have to look up what the dynamic IP address is here because we didn't assign a static IP address. So select these systems and click stop to stop them. You can later click start again. It'll take a while to start, but then you can start using them again.